If you want to store some data inside your Next.js application and have a state that is available everywhere into your app, this is the video you need. Previously, we saw that we can create a context and store some data locally. However, we would like here to have another solution and that could be a store. A lot of options are existing for React, such as Redux, but today I'm going to show you a store that I really like and that is really known uh, online, which is called Zustand. Zustand, it's a package that has a lot of success, we can see here on the top, and it's basically a store that you can create, really light, really simple to use inside your Next.js application, and you can do a lot of stuff with it. So what we're gonna do, we are going to install Zustand inside our Next.js application, and once it's done, we are going to set up our store. So I'm going to launch again my application and then it's done. And if I go down a little bit, we can see that down there, we got here a store that is created. So I'm going to get back to my application and on my source folder, I'm going to create a store. And inside this store, I'm going to use uh, actually a TypeScript file to create a user store, which will be for the current user. So we see here that we can use first uh, create from Zustan, and then we can create here our user store. So to do that, I'm going to type const user store, which will be actually create from Zustan that will be used. And inside we see that we got a callback function with a set that is returning to us an object. So what I'm gonna do here is just to create a fake user for now, which will be with a full name and inside it's going to be Guillaume and there we go. And here we see that it's just a local file or it could be used directly inside your component. But me, I want to export my current store. So there we go, I got my user here. Now what I, what I wanna do, I wanna show it directly inside my um, page, which I got here, my main page. And what I can do to do that is to create here a variable called user. And I'm going to use actually my user store. So to do that, I need to import here my uh, user store, okay? Directly from where I, I just created actually my store slash user and there we go. Then once it's done, what I need to do here is basically to return the state. So here also we've got a callback function that is going to return for us the state.user. So here my state doesn't get any uh, type for now, so I'm just going to put that. And what I want to display in here, it's my name. So with that, we're gonna see inside our application if it works. And if I update and I zoom a little bit, there we go, we've got our state directly uh, from the store. Okay, so now that is done, what I would like to have is a function that is able to update actually this user full name. So back in my store, I can create a function called uh, save user or update user. Let's call it update user. And this function is going to actually use the method that we got up here, which is the method set. And set is a function that is going to take a state again as a parameter and will return a new value, okay, for the user. So the thing is that here I got an object called um, user uh, and inside I got a key full name. And I need to pass an argument to this update user because here what I'm gonna do after that, I'm going to create my input. Well, I can actually do it now. So here I can put my P inside my user.fullName, okay. And, and then after what I can do is to create an input of type text, um, which basically here what I can do exactly is to say that on change, I'm gonna call a function and this function is going to be my update here. So what I wanna pass here is a, a new user. Let's say that is going to be new user of type any. And I want to merge actually the existing user. So what I can do is to use the spread operator uh, using state.user and inside here, I can also merge the new user. So what it's gonna do here, it's going to keep the existing state, but if I got something changing, 
it's going to be merged in here. Okay, so now I got this, what I can do is to get exactly the same and again, we're gonna do exactly like what we did for the variable on the top and we're gonna use the function update. First, I'm going to add some border to it to see the input, there we go. And here I'm going to type a new name, which would be Kevin. So what I wanna do with this e.target.value is to basically update the user, but be safe here. I got user.fullName. So what I want to do here is just to pass full name e.target.value. And my function here is going to respect any other data that could be in, in this user previously. So I'm going to get back. Okay. I'm going to come back. And if I type Kevin, we see that we've got full name that has been updated. So if you want to update an array or anything else, it would be always the same. You would have to do the operation inside the store. But we see that here the store is available directly. It's really easy to use. Zustand is very light, very simple, and we've got the right data at the right time. This is great. Can you fetch from your store? Absolutely. Let's write just an example. Let's say that you would like to fetch the user. Well, you can definitely create an asynchronous function to fetch your user, then to set your user. So what you would do is, for instance, here, um, await, okay, fetch, and here you would go to your API and your user and whatever would be this user, what, whatever you would like to do just after. What you can do is directly to set then your user instead inside here, your application. So basically, if you got some um, steps before, what you can do here is to await and get your response.json. And then when you got, actually we can call it fetch user to be more clear. When you got your user, you can definitely do it. So you can definitely fetch your user directly from the store. This is not something that I do often. I prefer to have everything in my view for a lot of reasons, for state or loading reasons. But you can definitely do this if you need to. Another thing probably you would like to subscribe to the store to interact with some other function that is outside of the store. So you would do a subscribe. So let's say that you would have a sub that would be here and you would like to subscribe to the user store. You would use simply subscribe and here you would do all your operation inside of it. So just let's say that you would have a console log. It's on the documentation and then you would call your sub just after you could have your action in here. Here you can do also everything else that you want to do. Just trigger another function, etc., etc. It's totally doable. Once the user store would have changed its state, it would trigger this other function. There are many stores that you can use with Next.js 13. Zustand is one of the best because for me, it's the lightest, the easiest to set up, the more readable. And at the same time, we clearly understand quickly how the store is working. We don't get a lot of lines of code, a lot of setup to do at the beginning. I let you go to read the documentation. I let you go use it and make your own opinion. But for me, when I want to set up a Next.js 13 application and I need to get a store in some situations, I always use Zustand.